How you doing, Coach? Um, do, do you get the sense that that your your defense is, you know, still still pretty tight together? It, it, it feels like um, even though there were some plays on Saturday that I'm sure you'd love to have back, uh, it seems like it, it the scheme's kind of holding up. Um, but I wanted to ask about the handful of big plays that Minnesota had and what what you thought may have triggered those. Yeah, um, I thought I thought the kids played a, a you know a pretty good game, uh, other than a couple big plays like you mentioned. Uh, you know, they're, right now they're uh, they're pl- they're playing um, really solid defense. The last few weeks, uh, they're about you know we we talked to the guys and you know you. You're five plays away from being, you know, really, really good defensively. Um, you know, we talked about we need to get those five plays back. We need to figure out a way to not let those five plays happen. And then also we need to get the ball back a couple more times. And if you do that, um, then then you're playing some really good football. Um, you know, as good as, as good as you can, you're going to have a chance to win every football game. Um, as far as why the plays happened, we just had, um, you know, we had the, the front set wrong one time we had a, a guy out of position another time um so it was it was more communication it was more um just a, a mistake that really the, the the two the two on the two run plays the mistakes that happened just never really happened and they did on that one and we, we can't it can't happen um but but you know that's that's up to me too i got to get those guys to make sure that they they uh they never make those those errors and you know and setting the things wrong um but you're you're 100 right. If we can find a way to limit those a couple big plays and get the ball back a couple more times, then then we're really we're really rolling. Parker Gabriel, Journal Star. Hey Eric, I know I know each game is different, but the first four weeks you guys were one of the worst statistically. Outfits on third down, and now the past three weeks you've been one of the best in the country. Um, is there something that explains that turnaround, or what has gone better for you over the past three weeks? No, I think, um, you know, I think there's a couple different factors. Number one, um, probably getting in less third and shorts, which which really helps you. Um, but the guys have done a great job on the, the third and shorts that we've had of operating. Um, and I think the guys have, have a really good understanding. Um, right now, I know Sam talked about, you know, scheme, but they're they're feeling really comfortable in the system right now. Um, we've kind of finally got the guys where they need to be, um, you know, probably. And once again, that's probably – uh, I needed to get them in some different places earlier, but they're they're where they need to be right now, and guys are understanding what they need to do, um, showing some different looks and how the looks work together um, in the third down packages. Whether you're going to show show pressure and drop eight, or whether you're going to show uh, coverage and bring some pressure, um, and they're also doing really well um, in the man coverage. Um, another huge huge piece in that third down puzzle is the 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 pass rush is not always you know sometimes you look at pass rush and you only look at generating sacks. But um, when I look at it, obviously I want to get sacks every time too. But um, when the pass rush is working together and that pocket's getting collapsed and that quarterback doesn't have an opportunity to run, that was hurting us a little bit earlier in the, in the, first part of the year where we'd have some good coverage downfield and the quarterback was running for about 50 yards a game um, in the first four weeks. And we've limited that down quite a bit. Uh, so that's a contributing factor too. Um, but, you know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of factors that go into that thing, and I just think that they've been addressed, and the kids accepted the challenge that was put in front of them, and they've uh, they've rose up to that. Mitch Sherman, hey Eric, um, how'd you feel Saturday for Cam Taylor Britt, um, who's now had to miss a full game this year because of two penalties? And is there anything that you can do that you haven't done to try to prevent that to guard against it just what what's the what's the strategy moving forward to avoid um, more of that yeah you know uh you know we sit around and and, and talk about that and I talk to some other people um you know around around college football uh it's a tough situation I mean you know the kid declares himself as a runner you know that 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 play and once again I'm not arguing calls I'm not complaining those officials have a hard job um but that same play happens five, six other times in that same game. Um, but the guy wasn't wearing a quarterback jersey. Um, 
so when the when the quarterback gets out and runs, we've just got to be ultra ultra conscious of of taking our head out. I thought Cam led with his shoulder, and then we had some head to head afterwards. But you know the replay I got in the booth, I was like, man, they're going to call this thing because that that was the replay they got. Um, in real time, you know, I, I think the officials did a good job. In real time, they did not throw a flag, and then, and then it got um, buzzed down, and they decided it was one upstairs. But you know, it, the unfortunate nature of this thing is, it's really it's really hard to to be physical out there right now um, when you're when you're worried about those hits. And what's going to happen is you're going to have to go ultra low, and unfortunately, there's going to be a lot more skill players with. Um, you know, season-ending injuries. There's going to be a lot of ACLs. There's going to be a lot of those types of things because guys are going to be forced to go low all the time. And I think you're you're opening up more issues on safety, player safety, than you are than you have already. I think there definitely need to be some player safety things addressed, and I think that they've addressed them and they've they've done a good job with that. But I think now it's becoming um, so common to get a, a targeting foul that there's going to be other player safety issues that are going to come up because of it. Um, but the bottom line is we're going to have to we're going to have to do a better job of, of tackling in the strike zone and you know taking our head out of the football play. Sean Callahan. Hey coach, uh, on a short week when when you watch Rutgers and their coordinator Sean Gleason, it looks like they do a lot of trick plays, gadget plays. How hard is that to prepare for with one less day and what have you seen? I mean, do they typically do a few of those every game? Yeah, they've they've got a pretty um, wide array of of football plays, and you know whether you call them gadgets or tricks. Um, but there's there's a, a lot of things where they're trying to uh, you know take advantage of some schematic situations. They're going to make you defend eleven on eleven because they're going to run the quarterback. Uh, you know some quarterback insert plays, whether it be power or counter, and, and the running back going the opposite way, which is kind of a, a new fad in, in college football. Uh, but they're going to make you defend the whole field, and they're going to make you use all 11 players. Um, thankfully, we see a little bit of that with our offense as well. Um, so the, the the principles behind it aren't, aren't new to our guys. Maybe the specific looks are, are something we need to get get um, dialed up on the field and then walkthroughs. Um, but the, the principles behind what's going on out there is not a, a complete – you know, shock to our guys. They've they've defended um, you know triple option football a lot, which this is becoming. You know, it's you know people look at it as I don't know RPOs to me or is triple option. There's still a dive. There's still a quarterback. There's still a pitch. He might be a, a slant. He might be in the curl. He might be in the flat. Um, they're just doing more stuff. You know, it's quarterback counter with the with the pitch player. It's it's quarterback power with the pitch player. Um, so our, our guys have, have done a good job of adjusting to what we need to adjust within our scheme. Um, but there, there's a lot of things that you need to be ready to defend and your eyes have to be super clean, you know, kind of like playing Purdue. You never know what you're going to get. Coach Brom has a ton of stuff um, that he, he likes to throw out there every week and your eyes just got to be really clean. And you got to do your job. Uh, a couple more for Coach. Uh, Andy Kendi, KETV. Hey, Coach, uh, how has Garrett Nelson progressed this year compared to last year, uh, and how much progress has he made? Well, <clears throat> I think last year, um, obviously, as a, as a true freshman, he was, you know, playing a lot off. He was learning football, but he was he was playing a lot off just, you know, sheer will and intensity and those types of things um, to be out there and play football. I think he's done a really good job of, of – you know, developing his technique, de developing his knowledge of the football game, um, you know, learning what we need him to do specifically and, and taking the coaching and, and bringing it to the field. So I think his development has, has come a long way, and I think he's he's nowhere near um, playing the best football he'll he'll play because he's so young. I think, you know, he's got he's – got, He's a true sophomore. He's got two or three years left that he can play, to, you know, depending on what happens with this this crazy year. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of development in his future, and I think that he's going to be – he is a good football player. He's going to be a really, really good football player, if not a great one by the time this thing's all said and done. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to continuing to work with Garrett. Brian Christofferson. Hey, Eric, I want to ask you a quick uh, recruiting question with tomorrow being – signing day how tough in this cycle was the evaluation process um just with with all the restrictions and stuff i mean as you kind of get to the end here how, how would you frame up what this year's been like from a recruiting standpoint uh it's been uh 
just like everything else, it's been challenging. And, um, you know, we sit here and, and talk about how hard the recruiting is, but I, I know there's, there's people in the country that are facing a lot worse stuff than we're going through, um, just not being able to meet kids. So I can't, I can't complain too much, but, you know, you're going to, everyone in this, in this recruiting cycle, hopefully you've met these kids at some point in time and for the most part you do. Um, but it was probably once when they were a junior or, or even younger, um, you know, without being able to see them recently, you, you just don't, you just don't get to physically put your eyes on, you know, what they look like as a, as they've matured, you don't get to sit in a room and talk to them and really find out about them. Now, there's been a bunch of zooms and those types of things, you know, and obviously talking to their coaches and everybody around them. Um, uh, but the, the, the real truth of the matter is you, you, there's going to be kids around the country um, at every program that are probably going to sign a scholarship letter that have never been in a room with a coach. And, you know, that that's – it is what it is. It had to be that way this year, but that that's a little scary. Um, you know, I don't think any of us would, would, you know, probably marry somebody that we only met over Zoom, but um, – you know, some of that, some of that's got to go on, and it's just a necessity by the the situation in the country. Um, so it, it's been a challenge to you know to get to know kids, and it's been a challenge for the kids too. You know, some of the some of these guys are going to sign a letter of intent and go play football somewhere that they haven't been on campus, or maybe only been on campus once. Um, so it, it's it's a scary thing for for all parties. But I think that the coaches and the players have made the best of of a you know unfortunate situation, and we all had to do the same thing. So. Thank you. Thank you. Last one for Coach Shenander, uh, Steve Sippel, Journal Star. Yeah, Coach, I mean, rule aside on Cam Taylor Britt, what effect does that have on your defense when he's out? And, I mean, is, is there any concern you have in the booth about the impact it has on the kids when he's not when he's unavailable now? As far as what, Sip, you're talking about just their, their, their makeup or, or their – how how it affected them mentally or scheme wise or yeah how it affects you scheme wise but also mentally um I, I think this is a mentally first I think this is a a strong group you know it, it it affected the game severely right there I mean we gave up a long play um, and then we get we got to stop they were going to come out for a field goal um, it was going to be fourteen to thirteen our offense was going to have two minutes left with two timeouts. All of a sudden, you know, they get that that penalty, and we get a new new fresh set of sticks, and they end up scoring a touchdown and eats a minute off the clock. So you're potentially talking about an 11 point swing, um, you know. So that was a the crucial crucial moment in the game. As far as mentally, I think um, you know the kids were upset that, and more upset that Cam had to not or that he doesn't get to play the rest of that game. Um, our kids have been great. They've been um, pretty resilient. They haven't backed down. So I think they were more upset for him, and they started playing for him. And uh, as far as schematically, it doesn't really do much to me other than, um, you know, just making sure guys are in the right spots and who, who's it, – it's more about getting your, your, your depth chart ready about if you lose somebody else, where do you go from there, who's going where. Um, but scheme-wise, we get a lot of practice with our twos, and, and I have uh, a lot of trust in, in Quentin Newsom. He went in the football game and, and played a good football game um, after Cam Taylor was out. So um, you practice what you practice. Um, we can we can do some things to help out a guy that, that you know, gets in there that, you know, maybe we don't feel great about. But I, I felt really good about Q coming in there. Um, so we didn't do it. We didn't change a lot schematically. Um, but – you know, the men mental part of it, you know, it's hard for Cam and, and it's hard for the kids, but I thought they fought through it pretty good. With Reimer out, Henrik got a lot of action. How did he hold up in the middle? He actually, he, play, he played a really good football game, you know, and, you know, hats off to Nick for, you know, playing outside backer and then back to inside backer and then basically becoming a starter in that game when, when, when Luke got knocked out. Um, you know, so it, it's a... Uh, I thought Nick did a, a tremendous job. He he was he was physical. Uh, he played hard. Um, he got us in 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 the right things most of the time. Um, and he, I thought I thought he had a good football game. I think the future's you know the future's pretty bright on that one. You know, but you know you, you talk about Luke being being out. You know, 
you should need to take a look at that hit also when the guy lowers his head on Luke, you know? So yeah. Yeah. definition of the rule is the definition of the rule.